Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Share Market Report. I'm Dale Gillam, Chief Analyst at Wealth Within. This week I'll be discussing how to make money in the stock market, the All Lord News Index and this week's Stocks of Interest. Now before we jump into the report, I'd just like to mention that if you have any thoughts on this week's report, please comment below and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you keep up to date. Let's get into this week's report. The majority of those who are successful in trading will tell you that you need a plan and a good mentor if you want to make some serious money in the stock market. And there is a good reason for this, because both will ensure you stay on track to achieve your financial goals. Well, most of us want the ability to successfully manage our own investments so we can have the lifestyle we desire. The unfortunate reality is that many never quite seem to achieve this. Usually this is because they treat investing in the stock market like punting at the races. It is common for those wanting to learn how to make money in the stock market to invest haphazardly in stocks as well as venturing into highly leveraged markets after attending a few weekend workshops. In fact, so many are attracted to the supposedly high returns you can make in these markets that they forget or simply ignore the inherent risks which one of our clients experienced before she found us. Unfortunately, Erica had thrown caution to the wind believing she was invincible after gaining a basic education in trading. And like many before her, she thought, how hard can trading really be? Well, she found out the hard way because she crashed and burned big time and with a bruised ego decided that she needed to apply a tourniquet to her life savings so as not to lose everything. In fact, her husband asked her to give up trading altogether. But Erica had never failed at anything in her life, and she realized that if she was going to succeed in making money consistently, she needed to invest in a proper education. And the good news is that for her investment in the Diploma of Share Trading and Investment paid off handsomely because what began as a hobby has today turned into a fully-fledged trading career that provides a lifestyle most only dream of. While you can read the full account of Erica's journey on our website, I wanted to bring her story to your attention as I've witnessed so many people unknowingly choose the wrong path and consequently lose tens of thousands of dollars, and in some cases, their life savings. My intention is to stop you from losing your hard-earned cash, and to guide you in a direction that will ensure you profit consistently when investing in the stock market. Getting the right education is the first step to achieving your financial goals much sooner than you otherwise would. Because while the rewards in the stock market can be high, with some of our traders earning thousands of dollars a week, while others are making tens of thousands of dollars a month in a high stakes game, the losses can be equally big without the right knowledge. The answer to building wealth is to do what wealthy people do, which means having a simple plan or a set of guiding principles so as to not make investing in the stock market overly complex. In fact, I always encourage our students to apply the KISS principle because these four letters have a very important place when it comes to learning how to trade or invest successfully. Some of you may be thinking of the saying, keep it simple stupid. However, my version of this four letter acronym is to keep it simple smart. Let me explain. The most successful traders I know and what I teach in our accredited education courses is to keep everything simple. Those with the simplest trading plans who know how to manage their risk will inevitably be far more profitable because a plan takes the emotion out of trading. Indeed, following a simple but profitable trading strategy and working with a trading mentor is the smartest thing that you can do and the quickest way to grow your wealth. Mistakenly, far too many people still think that becoming profitable is a position reserved only for Wall Street geniuses. Why is this? I believe it's largely due to the financial industry who have promoted for decades that retail investors will be far more profitable under their seemingly professional watch. However, the global financial crisis made many people wise to the fact that this simply is not the case. Let me show you why. In my best-selling book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, I took the simplicity of what I teach to the ridiculous by demonstrating how you could do far better than the average institutional fund manager by investing directly in the top 20 stocks in the Australian market. Using these stocks, I constructed two portfolios of 10 stocks each 
and calculated the returns over eight years from 31 January 1997 to 30 January 2005, applying a simple buy and hold strategy. I listed the companies in alphabetical order based on their stock code and numbered them 1 to 20. I then grouped all the odd numbered companies to form one portfolio and all the even numbered companies to form another portfolio. The results took into account all of the corporate actions that occurred during the period and the income from dividends. It may surprise you to know that the Portfolio 1 achieved a rolling return of 156.69% or an averaged annual return of 19.57%, while Portfolio 2 achieved a rolling return of 162.21% or an averaged annual return of 20.28%. I demonstrated this concept again by actively trading a portfolio of the top 20 shares on the Australian market in my latest book, Accelerate Your Wealth, It's Your Money, Your Choice, over a 10 year period from the 2nd of January 2007 to the 31st of December 2016, which took into account the global financial crisis. And the gain achieved from the capital growth and dividends during this period, taking into account all corporate actions, equated to 225.82% or an average annual return of 22.58%. Obviously, you can see how attractive these returns are, but imagine what you could achieve if you really gained a proper education. As you know, no one cares about your wealth more than you do, which is why I encourage you to take a step in the right direction by implementing the following 10 guiding principles to make money in the stock market right now. The first one is always educate yourself and understand what you're investing in. Many are willing to spend years studying to gain a formal education with the expectation that they will obtain a job. Yet when it comes to educating themselves about how to create wealth, they never quite find the time. Number two is don't over diversify. Aim to hold between eight and 12 stocks in your share portfolio as this reduces your risk and increases your returns. The third point is most importantly, learn how to set a stop loss to protect your capital in the event a stock falls in value. I always recommend 10 to 15% below your buy price, depending on the volatility of the stock, or 15% below the most recent high price. Number four is don't take tips from others because they are often less educated than you are. Instead, do your own research. Number five, Trading for profit in the stock market is not about how much money you make on any one investment. It is how much you do not lose over time. So it's important you learn how to sell because this rule alone can make you very wealthy. Number six is do what the rich do and that is don't follow the herd. The statistics have proven time and time again that the uneducated move their money into the market just before the peak and sell out after the crash. It is for this reason why I encourage people to remember Warren Buffett's famous quote, be fearful when others are greedy, and greedy when others are fearful. Number seven, if you're serious about making money for your retirement or your lifestyle, don't make investing a hobby, invest in yourself and make it your business. Number eight is avoid buying investments just for income. In other words, don't be lured into buying a stock just because it pays a high dividend. This doesn't make it a safe investment. And that's usually because the stock has fallen to such an extent and is often used to attract mum and dad investors who don't understand that it is pointless receiving income if the risk to your capital is too high. Number nine, don't be a gold digger looking to invest in small cap or cheap stocks. Remember the tech wreck. Buy only quality stocks in the top 100 shares on the market. Cheap stocks may look attractive, but they are often a wolf in sheep's clothing. Number 10 is don't buy and hold over the long term. It's far more profitable to time the market than it is spending time in the market. Remember the research I conducted in writing both of my books proves that anyone can achieve good returns with the right knowledge and patience. Buy and hold will only lead to average returns. 
while learning when to buy and sell will yield far better returns and lessens your risk. Now let's get into this week's stocks. Okay, let's get in, stuck into the markets and the stocks. So hopefully if everybody's had a really good uh, holiday season and uh, that it was everything that you'd like. So welcome back to this year for to have a really good look at the stocks and the market. And hasn't it been volatile the last month or two? Now I know with the All Ordinaries Index, um, I was expecting it to rise up through to Christmas and uh, it didn't do that. It, it's really interesting how I thought, you know, the last four weeks of 2018, I thought, you know, that the market would hold up and, and on this uh, horizontal dash line here, and I thought it would hold up and then move forward, um, but it didn't. And as you can see here over the last, that was the last week of 2018. You can see here it was one, two, three, four, five, sort of 60 weeks. I did think from here it was going to move up again, but it didn't. Uh, for those of you watching my US market report, you know, the Dow's done exactly what I thought it would do um, through to today, but the All Lords defied um, what I was thinking anyway, but that's okay. You know, it's like I find that some traders get really locked into a positional view and, and it's a kind of arrogance I think you see that and it's mainly with guys they have this view they did some analysis and they're locked into it I, I don't really care one way or the other as long as I'm trading well um, and it's always about having alternate views so never ever have a set view now whilst my thought was the Australian market would move up through up into 6,000 points by the end of uh, that first quarter of 2019. I still haven't changed that view. I still think our market is or will be bullish. Um, it's just been a hell of a lot more volatility around with you know, the US-China trade wars. And I think a lot of this is, and it, it, uh, to give you a bit of an idea, it sort of annoys me a little bit, is you turn on the TV and it's always about the US market, you know, and then the world markets decide what it wants to do. And the interesting thing is the US market doesn't have a lot to do with Australia. I mean, I think it's only about, it's less than 9% of our trade goes to the US. You know, we're much more aligned to China um, and Asia, a lot more aligned to China and Asia. Now, if China's slowing down, which they're talking about, you know, we're talking about still, if you're looking at China slowing down, it's still one of the three fastest growing economies in the world, even though it's slowing down. So what is slowing down and you know the US and China need each other they both need each other for a lot of things um, both for trade going uh, in and out of each country so uh, they'll probably work their, their stuff out anyway but the point is it's I think the world spends too much time and it's really that the financial industry pushes the hell out of the US market in terms of the news and journalists are to some degree lazy they're just getting stuff and we watch other markets all that u.s market way too much and you get a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because the australian market's very good our market's quite strong our economy is good um, there's no reason for it to have any major meltdowns and even the u.s market is it's growing and uh, it's doing quite well so there's no reason for it to melt down i just think we're getting over inflated price movements because of this sort of one world sort of philosophy or more volatility because you can make money through huge leveraging in markets and I think um, governments allowing big institutions to push the market around um, it, it, it's one of those things that I don't necessarily totally agree with when you've got hedge funds and other things pushing the market around and making it more volatile because the stock market's about creating wealth and it's about having assets it's about you know, you know assets in companies. That's how it was all about. So to me, it's more about creating wealth within having assets and growing assets. And a lot of the stuff that's traded on the markets nowadays is not necessarily an asset. But that's my little bandwagon anyway. But looking at the All Ordinaries Index, if I just zoom that up a little bit, so you can actually see, you can see here last week it opened at five seven one six and a higher five six two zero. So just a little bit higher, four points higher. Closing down a little bit lower at 5677. Interesting, the low was 5620, so 57 points above its low it closed. So, so whilst it opened roughly where my pointer is, it pushed up, pushed down, and then came back later in the week. Now, if I go and look at a daily bar chart, just to show you a little bit what I'm talking about, here we go. Here's Monday the 24th of December, 20, uh, uh, there's the... After Christmas, Thursday the 27th, there's Friday the 28th, so it closed here at 5, 
5716. Then last week, here it is, opened up 5716. Pushed right up. It couldn't go through that and close lower. Then it had a down day because the Dow was down pretty uh, bad uh, over, overnight. And then our markets found some support and held up. I think what we'll see now, uh, especially given the Dow was up last Friday, I don't have the data now. It's the 7th of January right now, so the day is underway. Um, but I think if we see our market close or move right above that and close above 5760, I think the move up that I was expecting is about to start and, and we're actually going to get into it. So it's a really exciting time for me in terms of the market because I still think the Australian market is bullish. So whilst it did fall further than what I expected, all I'm thinking is the time of the low just pushed out a month or so. That's all it is. And that's where trading is not just a science it's an art form and and nothing is 100 percent on the marketplace so whilst you can go one plus one equals two in the market it's one plus one equals two 2.5 1.75 it says that fuzzy factor in that you can never 100 percent exactly pinpoint it now it, I don't. I don't need to. It, it's more about making sure that when you are entering, you're entering with the highest probability, and when you're exiting, you're protecting your capital and taking your profit. So right now, as I said, I still think our market will move up. I think it. If it moves through this high here at five, eight, five, six, then I'm uh, really getting a lot more s solid confirmation that it will be uh, will be going up but what i would expect here if we it is the market is going to be bullish we'll get two three four weeks up maybe one or two weeks down again and then take off again and then that after those two, one or two weeks down if it does take off and make a new highs up in around that six thousand point mark or above this sort of five nine six six level through here um, then there's no reason why a market won't keep going through to do very, very well over the first quarter of this year. But again, it remains to be seen. We've got to trade on confirmation, not speculation. Today I wanted to have a good look at, um, I want to go into our indices and sectors as we, um, we've done that a, a few weeks back or late last year just to sort of show you a little bit about um, what's going on. This is a relative rotation graph. I won't explain that. I did that on the last video, so go and find that one and I did a little bit of an explanation. Don't get too hung up on it. It's very, very technical relative rotation graphs. But all I'm going to say is, is that the apex of these two grey solid lines here is, if you see up there, S&P ASX 200. So that, that apex is referencing the ASP ASX 200, which is that um, red triangle. As you can see, my pointer is right on top of it. So everything that's on here is in reference to that and that's really what I'm talking about. So it's relative rotation graph. So everything relative to the S&P 200. Now, you can see here the XTL or the top 20 is in this improving sector. Now, that's exciting to me because what happens is in marketplaces is the big stocks move the market not the small ones. And when the small stocks are outperforming the big stocks, that means you know that the market is getting to its end. Because people, what happens is people go, ah, oh, the big stocks are too expensive, so I'll go to the smaller ones. So, so the bigger stocks are pulling back and slowing down, and the smaller ones are speeding up and going faster. And so that's where you see. But then when the market's more bearish, the first ones to take off are the bigger stocks again, because they've now got cheaper. So this is how the market works. It's just a seesaw. It just goes between one and the other. So the top 20 is in this improving sector, and it's way out here, So which means it's uh, doing very, very well, and I would expect it to move up into this leading sector very soon. So talking about those top 20 stocks on the Australian stock market. Then you've got here, have a look at this, the top 50 stocks, and then you've got this one here, the XFL, the ASX, oh, um, XFL is the ASX 50 and this is the S&P ASX 50 pretty much the same thing as you can see there um, and then there's your top 100 here the XTO so all the top 100 stocks into this area but if we go over to this bottom right hand corner you see the XMD mid cap 50 is, is down it's in that weakening sector and same with the small ordinaries in that weakening sector these are the areas where you be exiting stocks and these are the areas where you're entering those stocks and that's really what it's about so I just want to go into the sectors now and you can see the sectors I've got a relative rotation graph on the sectors, and again, that reference point is the S&P ASX 200. Again, 
that point right there is the XJO, where my pointer is that apex there. So we can go right out here and you can see telecommunications, outstanding performer here. And this is where the opportunities lie. Here we have utilities. There's another area and financials. They're the three areas that I'd be looking at for getting buys. Here I'm looking at exiting positions or not doing as well here. So we've got um, uh, materials and energy through down into this weakening. That said, I do like the, both of these areas, and we're only looking at a one-month relative rotation graph with the last six months. So they have been coming off the last six months, but I would expect them to move over into here, move back up again, and do very, very, very well. Um, here, consumer staples going down. We're talking information technology going down, healthcare going down here. So these would be the areas I'd be looking at exiting stocks and then looking over here for them to be entering. Now, I want to go in and have a look at a couple of the telcos because over here, so we've obviously the telcos have done well the last six months. So let's now go and look at the telcos. If I just draw it down into, there we go. So we've got Telstra here. Now Telstra is one of those ones that for some reason Australians had this love affair with Telstra because obviously it was, obviously the company was, or oh, Telstra was the government owned thing and obviously it floated we look back here it floated way back in 1996 um, 97 there um, looking at that and, and I actually bought it off the float but I didn't have it very 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 long um, people made a lot of money out of T1 but not looking at it right now people that bought the first tranche of this wouldn't be doing very well if you looked at your average return out of that yes collecting dividends have been nice but you know collecting a, you know five six seven percent dividends not great when you're losing 60 70 percent and people just kept buying it all the way through here. Now this thing can run when it takes off, but the interesting thing to me is this low at 255, it almost did exactly the same, hit a low of 260, only June last year. So right now if we see this start, and we start seeing some green bars through here, that's exciting to me because Telstra has a big potential to run pretty hard. And so if I use my little um, do that thing here. You can see that run up here was 164% between February 2011 and February 2015. So, four years it ran 164% or roughly we'll divide 164 by 4 and what do you get? Um, you know, that's not a bad little return, is it? Over four years you've got 40% per year plus dividends. Then you lost it all if you kept holding it, which most people did. Most people would have lost most of that because I don't, I don't think I've ever met a Telstra shareholder that actually does actually sell it um, or too much. They just tend to panic a little bit too much. Um, so it can run pretty hard. So keep a watch out for Telstra. It is looking really, really nice. TPG, now TPG has had an interesting uh, 2018 because obviously... Um, it had did the announcement with Vodafone that they would uh, they're wanting to merge. Now, obviously, at the moment, there's been a bit of a stall in that, and this big move up here was that announcement where you saw TPG take off like an absolute skyrocket here, hitting the stratosphere in one uh, in a well, basically in a matter of a couple of weeks. But if I put my little tool on here, you can say it opened and it went up 69, 70 percent, closed at about 50 percent up in a few weeks there as you can see there now this thing is a good stock now it right now it's just come right back to its normal momentum at this point in time but interesting to see what does transpire with Vodafone and TPG whether the consumer um, uh, laws will, or the, the the government will allow those two companies to merge and obviously Telstra would be in their ear saying don't let them do it, don't let them do it So, but hopefully it's about creating competition I'm not sure why they say for these two companies merge there's less competition because one's very much in mobile or mobile communications the other one's very very much into fixed landlines and businesses TPG is very much about data it's about internet and it's very much about um, TPG owns Ionet, it also owns AAPT, all about data subscriptions and VoIP services, that sort of stuff. Obviously Vodafone very much 4G, so it'll be interesting to see whether this holds up, but watch this space, that's what I'm saying is watch this space. If we get some nice, some, some support here and this thing start to move up, when well, we might get a nice move again and the merger may happen and if it does then we might see it nicely take off and that could be 30, 40, 50% out of that pretty quickly again. Last one I wanted to cover before I finish up is Spark is another telco company, Spark New Zealand. And you can see how this thing has done very, very well and it continues to do really well. Telstra, Telstra and um, uh, this sort of company, you can see here, has been around since 1991. Again, 
most of the time I spent falling away because Telstra or tel telecommunications is a fairly heavy industry in terms of you know equipment that sort of stuff and changing technologies and having to reinvent themselves. I remember watching the CEO of Telstra one day at a big um, function in Sydney and he said we're not a telco company we're a media company and that's where Telstra has firmly been moving for years into being a media company now Spark looks great it's been trending right up beautifully since 2010 so these trend very very well they've got consistency in terms of its customers its revenue streams those sorts of things so these are sorts of good stocks that you put in your portfolio if they are rising, if they're falling, as you can see there, you stay right out of them. This is why it's critical that you use stop losses and everything else. So for those of you who haven't read my book, Accelerate Your Wealth, um, that I mentioned earlier in this um, video, get it. It's the it's going to be the cheapest way for you to earn, learn some really, really solid rules about getting in and getting out of stocks and managing your portfolio. You will reap the benefits um, from reading it. I'm getting a lot of feedback from people. Um, who bought it um, in late last year and, and uh, not long after it came out and they're just saying, wow, their portfolios are really turning around. So it, again, it's up to you. Go into the bookstops, bookshops, if I can say that, bookshops, um, and get your order. So if they don't have it on the shelf, just say, hey, accelerate your wealth, Dale Gillum. I, I need to get that book. Can you get it for me? So um, that's it for me today. If you want me to have a look at some stock for you, remember, post below, type your codes in, post below. Um, but tell me a little bit about it um, and why you've got it or that sort of stuff or why you're looking at it. Um, but I'd love to have a bit of a conversation with you. But good luck, good trading. Talk to you next week. What are your thoughts? If you've got any questions, please comment below. Go and listen to our Talking Wealth podcast. They're available on SoundCloud and on our website. Now they're jam-packed with valuable information which will help you elevate your trading. Now, if you're serious about learning to trade the share market and you'd like more information about our courses, please click the link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've liked the video, remember to subscribe to keep up to date. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.